Got another little Yamaha. This one's got no spark. Let's figure it out. <laughs> Welcome to Tom's Tinkering Adventures. Today we're going to work on this Yamaha XT225. A friend of mine picked this up recently, drove up to uh, Orange County about 100 miles away because it was an amazing deal and uh, I was picking on him a little bit about it that I was going to buy it and another friend of mine was doing the same thing. But uh, It was an amazing deal because it didn't have spark. I think I couldn't get it to start. So we were hoping it was going to be something simple. He messed with it for a day and gave up and uh, of course it came to me. So we are going to get digging in it. We'll try to look for obvious things first and uh, cross our fingers that we can find something simple and easy, but if not, we'll dig deep. He's already got the seat off, and there's a very good story on that. The seat wasn't bolted on. It blew off on the highway on the way here, and he did not recover it. <laughs> okay, so we're gonna pull this side cover off and we'll pull the tank off and we'll get down to the meat and potatoes of the uh, operation here and just start looking for things. We've already, well, he has already located a lot of wires that uh, look sketchy. If I get that tank and side cover off, we'll come back. I got the uh, booster on here. I shut the garage door, turned out the light, so we got a little, little bit more darkness here so we can take a look. See if we've got spark just to verify that our issue is our issue. Maybe this will stay right where we want it here. And I see nothing. Now, before we go much further, I want to point out a few things here. Look at this. We've already got a, a splice on this wire here that's going to the hot side of the coil. That ain't no good. Oh, well, I mean, it's good. Hopefully it's spliced, but um, there's a lot of these around on this bike. So, I have a feeling we may be chasing down just a wiring issue. Well, I want to check this coil wire here for continuity before we go any farther. So I have the meter set up, one end over here. And I just looked and I seen we had an orange wire coming out of what I believe is the CDI back here. So I unplugged that end right here. Let me bring the stand over. I need both hands. I can't hold the camera. I can't hold you and my work at the same time. All right, so we have continuity between this end and that end. So that means that our signal isn't getting to the coil. I would guess we could still possibly have a bad coil, but we do know that our wire is good from here to here. Let me see, got this battery charger disconnected. You can see right here we've got a, a weird wire with the coating taken off of it. I'm going to pull all this out and take a look in here, see what all this stuff is. Now I'm going to do a rudimentary coil test. I've hooked this back up to the coil and on this end I put an alligator clip onto it and I'm going to just touch this end to the battery and we will look and see if we get a little bit of spark just by sending 12 volts straight to the straight to the coil. Let's get you zoomed in here real close because I might have to look at the footage. All right here we go. Let's see if we get a little bit of spark touching this to the battery over here. I saw a little bit. I don't know, did you see it on the camera? Let's try it again. I had a little bit. There I saw some. A little tiny bit. Hopefully y'all saw that. A lot of people 
myself included in that group of people, do not like these side stand safety switches or the clutch safety switches. I understand why they're there, but sometimes they fail. So uh, many people, myself included in this group once again, like to override these. So that's probably what I'm gonna do. So what I will do is disconnect that one. And I will actually, for now, look in my magical box of connectors and see if I have one and I'll just put one in there. But if you're doing this at home, you can do this one of two ways. You can uh, follow this back as far as you want and then hook the two together with uh, either a butt splice or solder them or a butt splice and solder them. I like to kind of cut it on this side and do it on this side and then you still have a connector there. That way, if, for whatever reason, someone wants to install a side stand safety switch, they don't have to source the both ends of the plug. <clears throat> and Suzuki, I don't know if there are some manufacturers for these um, clutch safety switches are pretty smart because they actually have a male and a female connector. So I'm gonna pull this off and we'll see what's under here. This terribly ugly headlight shell. God, that thing is awful looking. When I was tracing this clutch wire up here, I saw this mess right here. And look at this. Who the, who the hell uses butt splices like that? And then these are taped. So looking at this, I see we got some colors are the same and some are different. And I think what this is telling me, and just by the look of these keys, is that we've got an aftermarket um, switch wired in here and done in a very professional manner. I mean, trust me, I'm not a wiring expert by any means and uh, I do some somewhat shady stuff. I'm sure some of y'all are, you know, thumbs down in my videos and leaving me some exciting comments, but hey, it works, it works. This doesn't look like it works. Um, funny thing, and I don't know if we can make it happen here again or not, but seeing all this made me think about a uh, <coughs> neighbor I went to try to help get his motorcycle running and we weren't getting any spark and we changed out a bunch of things because uh, I had a similar bike. So we just were swapping parts, you know, firing the parts cannon at it. And uh, what happened on his was that you would turn the key and then turn it back just a little bit, like between the off and on position, and it would run. And before I put you all on video here, I was kind of messing around and I got some spark here. So let's see, by doing that, so let's see if, y'all can see it verify my craziness I'll get you all zoomed in nicely there we'll turn this thing so that the electrode is facing y'all maybe get you on this side of it it's a hard thing here figuring this camera out where I'm at <laughs> where are we at right there <laughs> I'm working overhead and backwards. All right, stand by. See that? There's a little bit of spark, right? I'm not crazy this time. So what I'm gonna do, <clears throat> excuse me, what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna eliminate this key switch completely. And um, hopefully right here, I will um, show a picture of the wiring diagram which will show that all you have to do is connect the red and the brown wires together and to connect those together I have dug through my magic box of wiring and I have not have not found a plug that will plug directly in there but I found one that has the same type of connectors so what I'm going to try to do is I'm going to try to push these pins out just two of them and then I'll push the pins on to the red and the brown wires and then I will just twist the ends together and we will see what happens. Have you ever seen something quite as amazing as this? There you go, I got the uh, wires in there and this is our new, the 
This is our new key right here, our hot wire. See that? We'll go uh, full on fabulous with that. And now let's see if we have spark action over here when we crank on it. <laughs> All right, let's uh, let's spray some juice in here. I've already prepared for this because I was getting excited. I took there's a little vacuum port right here. I took the cap off of that. I've got some starting fluid, so I'm just going to spray some of that in there, and we'll hook the spark plug back up. Let me get you set up. All right, so we'll come over here. There's our. Here's our starting port. That's the good stuff. And our key is still on. Let's see what happens. Well, isn't that something? There she is with my amazing key and the tank installed with some fuel going into it. <laughs> Funny, I go for the key to shut it off. The key's not doing anything right now. There we go. So now I have to decide if I want to try to... Um, chase down all these leads and figure out why we are having these issues here or just uh, order up another key switch. So I'm gonna do a little research and we'll come right on back. I haven't really done any more troubleshooting. Only thing I've done so far is I have disconnected the other two wires off of this. So now I just have the red and the brown wire, which is actually the red and the black wire at this point hooked up onto the switch. What that means is that this is gonna shut off the main circuit, but it won't kill the engine. So the key will turn on and off the circuit, but I'll bet we can still start it. Well, maybe not, okay. Oh, the start button won't work. It will work when the key is on. Watch this. So that's what the second set of wires do in this circuit. They um, close the circuit to the coil or the ignition or something along those lines. I didn't really follow out. You could go back and look at, well, you could go back and look at that wiring diagram, but all I showed is what the switch does. So when the switch is in the on position, it makes contact between the brown and the red wire. When it's off, it probably makes contact between this black and this black and white wire. But at this point, you technically could ride the bike because it'll start and you can shut it off and it won't start. So this is the super cheap fix. The next super cheap fix may be just to track down all these wires and see if we've got something shorting out somewhere under all this mess here. Who knows? So I guess what I'll do is I'll try to just reconnect all these and see if it, see if it works. Maybe I'm sort of a little bit evil, but I really love it when someone brings me, brings me a motorcycle that they bought broken. And they couldn't get it going and I get it going and I get to be the first person to ride it so the sun's going down a little bit out here oh we got a beautiful beautiful late evening here I like the way the sun goes down through this palm tree but anyway we don't have a seat on this but I do have a Yamaha TTR 125 hanging out around here so look at that Yamaha seat <laughs> doesn't quite fit but that's gonna work so I'm going to get this thing out and I'm just gonna ride it up and down the driveway and uh, 
I guess I'll set up the camera so y'all can see the first glorious run of this bike under its new ownership. Well, I mean, I don't own it, but it's under a new owner. She does look glorious. And uh, I want y'all to remember that, uh, you know, safety first, wear your safety overalls. I got my safety hat on too. but it's enough to make him jealous. I buttoned her back up the way I got it. I'm gonna leave this seat sitting on here so that when my buddy comes to pick it up, he can at least ride it. And I won't be the uh, only one who's ridden it, but I will be the first. <laughs> and uh, I just left it the way it was here. Because it does work. Um, this switch is going to fail, is my thoughts, so I'm going to suggest that he just buys a new one, and then we'll rewire it in there, <coughs> and it'll be up to him whether he wants to spend the, it's I think $28 for a knockoff Chinese one, it comes with the switch and the fuel tank, and this one has obviously been changed, this is not the original fuel uh, cap, fuel tank cap, uh, the Yamaha one is likely to be more expensive if it was up to me, well, I've definitely been known to buy the cheap stuff, and um, it definitely has bit me before. So, you know, sometimes you just take your chances when you buy that stuff. Uh, it, it's okay if you go into it knowing, knowing that you're not getting maybe the top quality. I'm not saying it's all bad. Some of it's okay. I've had really good luck on some of that cheap stuff, but sometimes it doesn't work. I would probably take a look to see if someone has one of these uh, in one of those like motorcycle um, junkyards. There's some eBay sites where people just part stuff out. So probably a stock Yamaha one, even if it's 15, 20 years old, is probably better than a new Chinese one. But, you know, you got to wait and see what the deal is. But the lesson that we learned on this bike is look for the smoking guns. You know, we saw the connector by the coil check that and then started to do just some basic troubleshooting i didn't even get out the book and do any ohm ratings or anything like that just think about the common things so i went to the kickstand switch and then went to the clutch switch and finding the ignition switch wiring up there is kind of what set me off so that's you know um been troubleshooting a lot of stuff for a lot of years. So maybe you could mess around with this thing for a week and never figure it out. Maybe someone else might have found it a lot quicker than I did, but one way or the other, you just have to have a method to your madness, whatever it might be. And uh, we kind of struck gold there. Got a little bit lucky, like I said, from previous experience of seeing a key switch kind of failing a little bit. And uh, man... <laughs> Very happy that it was such an easy fix. All right, if you're digging what I'm putting out, give me a thumbs up. If you would, please leave a comment down below. And uh, if you're not already a subscriber, please consider doing so. Thank you very much for watching. Get out there and find your adventure. Adios.